Okay. With this approximation, and now I have probably have to go into a little detail about the approximation, because you want to multiply that average by some charge, okay? And you're not quite getting the quantities with their meanings straight, okay? And, and naturally, this is not, I mean, this is really simple reasoning, except it's complicated, <laughs> okay? Now, uh, and you're not used to doing it, okay? You're more used to doing it than you were. Okay, but with this approximation, and that is 0 0.005 joules per 0 0.001 coulomb transferred, right? Noting the 10 transfers are required, because this is joules not, oh, this is joules per transfer, right? Oh. Okay? Now I want to focus on that. Now you could say it's joules per 0 0.001 coulomb, right? And you're transferring 0.1 coulomb. So you're going to have to have 10 times that many, right? You could reason it out that way. It'd be perfectly valid. I want to focus on the number of transfers, though, okay? For reasons that you'll see in a minute. Noting that 10 transfers are required. So it should take 10 times that, 0.05 joules, to change the charge from 0 0.01 coulomb to 0 0.02 coulomb, right? Now remember, this is an approximation. You can't just average the initial and final quantity and get the average of the quantity, right? Now when can you average initial and final quantities and get the average of the quantity, the average value of the quantity? isn't usually the average of the initial and final values, okay? When is it? We do that with trapezoids, don't we? We do. No. We're, you know, we're not actually doing a trapezoidal approximation here, right. okay? We're doing a Riemann sum, a left-hand Riemann sum, basically, okay? But that's not my question. When is the average value of the quantity? Why isn't 